Tell me a little bit about what you do at MB and what you provide to sporting customers. Yeah, so BT Media and Broadcast is part of the BT Group um, and we are the section specifically set up to look after all of our broadcast customers. We look after, in particular, two regions, which is the UK, and then we have a really big footprint out in Asia Pac as well, where some of our teams are also based. And we have the strap line that says we are here to enable us to bring the best connectivity to enable the best media experience for billions globally. So our customers range right throughout um, the industry from the big public sector broadcasters all the way through to your production organisations um, that work with the sporting sector as well. And we are home to the BT Tower, which is the largest switch um, in the world and where we switch over 16,000 hours of content every single day through there. So that becomes a kind of media hub and a media gateway where we have the ability to kind of connect in and pick up the content and transmit that right across the world. The portfolio that we deliver expands right from kind of the, the network that we deliver all the way through to OB services and we deliver customers such as the SPL, we deliver the English Premier League um, and we also do uh, Racing UK for instance um, right across uh, through to um, different production organisations. And connectivity, I was with a actually with a particular production organisation we were talking about motorsport last week and they said to me connectivity is king that's what we need in production especially in sport now and I think that's become a trend because of the remote production acceleration to enable remote production then connectivity is a really key part of that so through the pandemic we were really proud that we've kind of accelerated that trend and accelerated that move to remote by enabling and working with uh, partners like EMG to get their first remote operating centres, um, predominantly the first one being in High Wycombe and then working on many afterwards um, to look to, to accelerate them kind of doing that. And it's paving the way for us now as we look towards uh, how we deliver rugby in particular as we go forward into remote production too. So that's kind of the core of what we do. The portfolio very much starts at the network and we have um, the UK media network and also our global media network. And we've just launched that you may have seen as well that we uh, launched our Vena network, which is going to be our software defined network as we go forward. And the Vena network was really about how do we help the network to use it as a decision making and a linchpin for integration with other applications, which will help the media workflows become simplified throughout the whole of the supply chain. So our vision is that that network acts as the kind of decision maker. So you can imagine a decision that gets made in the scheduling, you make that decision in the scheduling system and it automatically flexes your bandwidth up into the network which then automatically charges you the commercial rate for that. And as in particular when we think about um, sports, uh, we think the commercial model will work really, really well given the event-based um, sporting kind of uh, pieces. And then the portfolio goes right the way around from the traditional satellite OB services that we provide. We're also um, looking into audience interaction platforms, and that includes, uh, we think again, for sporting customers, football clubs have been without fans in stadiums for a really long time now, and the revenue that they've been generating has been particularly low through that part. So we can see an online voting tool that we've traditionally used in, in kind of programs like Strictly Come Dancing, potentially being able to come through and start to help um, man of the match, vote for your favourite and start to help our sporting and our football clubs become generate a new revenue as well as they go forward. So it's quite an encompassing portfolio that starts at the network and then moves right through into the services that we layer over the top of the network um, at Media and Broadcast. And just looking at the summer of sport, what role has Media and Broadcast been playing in enabling successful? Yeah, so this summer of sport, um, for us at Media and Broadcast, to make that to be really, really successful, um, there's two things that really come to mind for me, and, and actually one sporting event in particular throughout the summer that I think we've, we've had a really big part to play, and that's the Euros. Um, and I'm going to talk not about how we actually deliver it, because in the particular Euros, what we were providing was the core network at the, the core kind of um, broadcasters, rather than the outside production. But bits that kind of often get missed are um, the fan zones. So I'm going to touch a little bit on what we were doing to enable fan zone connectivity right across the UK. And then also what happens behind the scenes, because we've got a fam fabulous IMC run by our very own Superman, Steve Bintley. So many people will know his name and know what he does for us. Um, 
So the first thing is obviously delivering those fan zones and, and we've delivered all of those across the UK and I'll take the, the London one for instance, which was at Potter's Hill. And uh, that was expecting thousands of fans to, to turn up every match day to watch the game. So it's really important that the connectivity in there is absolutely flawless and we're not sitting with lots of fans looking up a big screen and then we lose the connection. So I remember being on a, on a hill in the Yorkshire Dales actually um, on early part of June and getting a call from uh, Eurovision in particular saying we just need some extra help to help us with the triage of what's going on at, at uh, Potter's Hill. So quick phone call into Openreach and a, and a fabulous kind of triage team from Steve Bintley to be able to get that live and get that working. And that delivered seamlessly throughout the whole games to enable thousands of fans. I think in a summer where we were all craving atmosphere and environment and just interaction, um, enabling those fan zones, actually, we don't often talk about it, but super high connectivity, low latency, and the ability to, to light it up very quickly was really important there. And then we needed to stabilize the core network because obviously we provide that for a number of the key broadcasters that would have been broadcasting the games. So Steve's team uh, goes into a planning phase before any major event and they personally look at um, all of the kind of um, change controls and we have thousands of network engineers out in the UK um, looking after our network and occasionally little changes from an open reach engineer can just make that tiny little drop in service occasionally so it's Steve's job and his team's job to make sure that there's absolutely no changes on that network so they lock that down um, 5 p.m. the day before any event goes live make sure there's a complete change freeze in place they run uh, testing beforehand that we get into. They agree all of the procedures up front with OpenReach as well to make sure that we don't get any of those outages. Um, and then they check in on a daily basis uh, with all of our broadcasters in the network as well to check that they haven't experienced anything we've not seen. And we're really proud to say that throughout all of that and, and our partners, especially at ITV, um, we didn't receive any kind of outages throughout the whole of the, the Euros games. So, so yeah, a true, a true summer of sport. We've obviously been doing lots of other bits, but the Euros is one that really stands out for us um, here at BT. And looking ahead, what's next for medium broadcast across the sporting industry? Yeah, well, I briefly I touched on the rugby very at the beginning of this and, and what's next for us at Media and Broadcast when we look ahead at what some of the technology brings and, and after this summer of sport. Um, when I think about the rugby, we're now starting to take that remote. So that will be the first uh, piece that goes remote next. And we're actually putting that on our Vena network because the Vena network offers a much higher core bandwidth um, and lower latency. So it will future-proof the rugby and really take it on that remote journey. Um, remote production is definitely here to stay and accelerate. So as we look forward to, we also want to start to look at our relationships across the production organisations and look at where we can um, create getting them on net so that they can utilize the BT Tower potentially as a gateway to kind of move their content through, but also it enables them to start to put more of those remote operating centers. And also as we look globally outside of the UK, looking to where that trend is going to accelerate as we go there too. And then for us, the other part of that is that we're really keen that remote production, it not only helps the industry and kind of enables them to meet cost saving transformation, but it's really key to their carbon footprint kind of reduction and also into BTs as well. And we're big advocates for driving diversity across the workforces. So that acceleration to remote, the more production organisations we can get on net and work with will certainly help not only kind of bandwidth efficiency, but diversity and also carbon footprint. We're also uh, trialling some uh, JPEG excess on some live cases at the moment. And we see that JPEG access is going to allow us to take that bandwidth efficiency even further to create that kind of almost visually lossless um, experience for um, our customers. And we will go live next season with the Premier League with some JPEG access um, uh, kind of actually being used in a live environment as well. So that's, that's on the horizon and something we'll be, we'll be bringing out as we go forward. And then thirdly, you heard me talk about the Vena network. And Vena, because it's our software-defined network, we really now want to take it the step further away from just the connectivity and start to think about those integration layers and those media workflow processing applications. So we've launched something called the Vena Quick Start. Um, and it's essentially a consultation 
that we're running uh, with um, any customers or any organizations that wish to work with us. And it's run also and led by our very own John Ellerton, um, who will take everybody through a kind of overall journey from start to finish um, to look at what they currently have, what the technologies are. We'll look at the evolutions in the technologies along the way, and then we'll start to look at what processes and behind the scenes, how does everything work, what are those integration layers looking like. So what we want to really learn and, and develop is what does the sporting industry want from us in that kind of um, application development. So we want to take as many people through that as we possibly can um, and start to really work on those integration layers as we get through um, too. And then I mentioned the audience interaction stuff, which we think next year as well will have a really big, intera uh, really big impact into the market um, to support kind of that more digital experience um, as we kind of, I was reading about the Olympics, for instance, and how they've now got the new fan zone this year and so forth. So, you know, you can imagine an application base that many of our, uh, many of our sporting customers can consume to start to get that two-way interaction from their fans and their audiences as well. So, so yes, that's, that's what's on the horizon at Media and Broadcast.